There's one position we've all been in in Football Manager. It's a feeling we've all experienced and something that unites us all. It's of course our first day in the new job and we just don't have a clue what we should prioritise. So do we just go straight to the most interesting areas, the players, the tactics, the transfer market? Or do we take a more pragmatic approach? Is it really going to be our best path to longer term success to go straight to the most exciting bits? Let's discuss it today as I give you my top three priorities when taking on a new club job in Football Manager. If you're looking forward to it, please do add a thumbs up and subscribe for daily FM content. There's weekly episodes of this top three series as well. But for now though, we need to take our minds back to our first day in a job and begin with our number three top priority when joining a new club. Number three is set pieces. Of the three tips I'm going to share with you today, this is probably the one most focused on instant success. After all, you do have to get results and have a certain new manager bounce to have an impact and keep your job. We're still going to be planning for longer term success in the background, but we need to get the fans and board on side too. This one is particularly useful if you're taking over a side in poor form mid-season or one with average players that can't play in your favoured tactical style immediately. It might not be pretty to watch, but if it's done well, it's a surefire way to improve the goals scored and the goals conceded columns. To prove my point, there's a reason the elite clubs are now employing specialist set-piece coaches in the real footballing world, and that's a reminder too. Make sure you remember to train the set pieces that you set up, otherwise they're not going to be half as effective. If this one is for instant impact though and for having quick results at a football club, let's move on to our top two tips where we start to lay more longer term foundations for our club. Number two is mentoring and bonding. Now, I'd imagine at this stage you probably just pulled a face at the screen for me suggesting this as the second most important thing to do when you join a new club, but please hear me out. We all know that the dynamic screen and player morale is pivotal to our continued success in FM. If we get in a rut or we see a drop off on that side of the game, it will likely have a massive impact on our performances. Well, that's where these two training areas become absolutely crucial. Mentoring is a great way to adjust the mentality of your squad and it's a far cheaper way of doing it than replacing the whole team. Often, budget dictates, depending where you're managing, that we have to work with largely what we've got in the short term. So in these instances, find your strongest personality or maybe sign just one experienced professional personality player and let them lead your mentoring groups. It can help pull a younger squad into shape, give them a backbone in difficult games and you can use it alongside team bonding training sessions to build the social groups and the team cohesion. Because let's face it, if your team are strong mentally and they're pretty cohesive tactically, you've got more than half a chance. And number one is staffing. Regulars to this channel and my long-term stories will know already just how important I feel this is. You work so, so hard on getting the right players. Fight the board for those big facility upgrades you need and getting your tactics right, making sure you've got the perfect shape, the perfect set pieces as we've already discussed then you leave all the work to perfect these to be done by absolutely useless buffoons in your coaching team. Why? There is nothing, nothing more important in football manager than getting the right staff. Forget looking for your next big transfer and get a staffing team around you that can help maximise the potential of your current players and find you the right ones for the future too. Use job adverts and staff meetings. I don't use the staff search screen, but you can use that too if you wish to get the best possible staff into your football club. If they can help you score even just one more goal from a set piece, help one player recover from an injury a week quicker, or spot one young star signing before any other club, isn't it worth that little bit of effort? It's a big mindset shift if you're a football manager player, but it'll be rewarding, I assure you. When you next join a new club, ignore the players, head straight over to the staff search screen and solve those problems first then you can worry about the playing staff and everything else. So those are just my top three tips when joining a new club in Football Manager, but what are your immediate priorities when you start a new job? Let me know yours down in the comments and tell me how much focus you give each of my top three tips at the moment. If you enjoyed this or found it useful, please do add a like and subscribe for daily FM content. We've got a massive week in our long-term FM22 stories, a top three next week, 
and a brand new attribute experiment which dropped earlier today. I'll put last week's debate though above my head now, so please give it a try if you haven't already, and I'll see you here again next week for another episode of Top 3.